Welcome to our service for Advent 2. 
God, our Father, our Mother and our Shepherd, you come close to us when we need you and you are there when we think that we don't. Good, Good and, and faithful, faithful God, God, you are, are beside, beside us all the way, way when, when we, we notice and, and when, when we, we don't. don't. Tending and mindful, leading and feeding, your eyes never stray from us. Call, Call us, us back, back again, again, merciful God, to be, be with, with you in, in this, this hallowed time and space. space. Call us beyond our small notions, beyond our great dreams, to see beauty and potential where we haven't thought to look. May, May these days, days and weeks be a true advent of new thinking, thinking new experiencing, experiencing new, new communion with you, with you, our loving, loving God. God. Amen.
You are wise, O Lord our God, in giving us waiting times. Thank you for what we have learned in those times, to trust while we have not yet received, to dig in and build resilience while we live without, to hang on tenaciously in the seeming nothingness. Thank you for the chance to stop and question how ready am I, to take stock, prepare and reorder our priorities, to keep asking in accordance with your confidence, with our confidence in you, to do the things to help the birth of all that we hope for. God, you too are waiting. Thank you for waiting for us, waiting for our attention whilst we are preoccupied, waiting for our cooperation because you believe in the work that we can do, waiting with your story to retell and retell because we always need to hear it again and again. Thank you that you waited for the right time and became one of us. Thank you, Jesus, for your waiting and preparing so that through you we would see the life of God walking amongst us. Give us wisdom in this waiting time so that when we come again, we are ready to welcome with open arms all that you have yet to offer and teach and give. In your name we ask it, our friend and saviour. Amen. Amen. And we turn to confession. Dearest God, constant in the face of our fickleness, covenant keeper in the face of our betrayals, Reveal to us again just how kind and forgiving you are. Where we, Where are, we are being, being too hard, hard on ourselves, ourselves help, help us, us to learn tenderness. tenderness. When we start raking over old hurts, teach us to soothe what is sore and to trust that you are putting us back together again. You sit with us in all that we find hard to move past our own failings and the failings of others which hurt us. We look, we look to you for courage and grace, and grace to, to forgive, forgive ourselves and forgive others. We look to you for the example of bearing grievance without hitting back. Make, Make us, us merciful as you, as you are merciful and, and generous, generous in our, our warmth towards, towards all. all. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God, whose love is infinite and mercy everlasting, forgive you your sins and welcome you back into his peace. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Malachi. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of old, as in former years. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. is 
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to, to you, you o Lord. Lord. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip ruler of the region of Iturea and Trachonitis, and Lysanias ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you O Christ. Christ. Now I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Tomorrow is St Nicholas Day, in Dutch, he is known as Sinterklaas, and it is from this that we get the name Santa Claus. And in some countries, it is on St Nicholas Day that presents are given. In the Middle Ages, nuns used to deliver parcels of food and clothes secretly on the night before St Nicholas Day to the poor, so that they had gifts of food to help them 
get through the winter. Such acts of generosity have their origin in the stories from the life of St Nicholas. Nicholas was born to Christian parents in the third century and after they died he distributed their wealth to the poor. The most well-known story that gives us the beginnings of the tradition of present giving in Santa Claus concerns his care for a devout man who lost all his money. He had three daughters and could not afford their dowry, which meant that they could not marry and may have ended up as slaves. Hearing of the family's problems, but being too humble to help the family in public, Nicholas went to the house at night as the first daughter became of marriageable age and threw a purse full of gold coins in through the window so that the father could arrange the daughter's marriage. He did the same for the second daughter. But as the third daughter came of age, the father stayed awake and caught Nicholas as he was putting the coins through the window. He thanked Nicholas for his kindness and Nicholas asked him not to tell anyone about what he had done, though inevitably the story spread. Nicholas undertook a number of pilgrimages and while he was returning from the Holy Land, the Bishop of Myra in Turkey died. The priests in the city decided that they would make the first priest to enter the church that morning their new bishop and Nicholas went very early to the church to give thanks for his safe journey so he became Bishop of Myra. On one of his journeys he was on a boat when a storm blew up and the sailors were terrified. Nicholas prayed and the wind and the rain eased which is why he is not only the patron saint of pawnbrokers, the three bags of gold becoming the three balls outside a pawnbroker's shop. He is also the patron saint of sailors and there are lots of churches dedicated to him by the sea. St Nicholas Hornsey is one example and even St Nicholas Beverley is dedicated to St Nicholas and is a reminder that there used to be shipbuilding in the parish on the River Hull. Advent is a time of preparation for the coming of Christ at Christmas and each week we reflect on those who prepared the way. Today we remember the prophets. Our Gospel sits John the Baptist in this prophetic tradition. But preparing the way isn't just something that involved people in the past. Advent is also a time of looking forward to the second coming of Christ and our role in preparing the way for his return. Each time we say the Lord's Prayer, we are asking for Christ's kingdom to come. The challenge of the prayer each time we say it is for us to work with Christ to build his kingdom here on earth. The generosity and humility of St Nicholas gives us an inspiration to do this. Generosity is not just about sharing our material goods. St Nicholas clearly knew the people for whom he had a care, which is why he was aware of the father's need and the worries for his daughters. Part of our calling is to be aware of the needs of our friends and neighbours and seek to meet them in a spirit of Christian service. It might be about knocking on the door of someone who is lonely, taking time to listen to someone who is worried, or giving practical help to someone who is struggling. If we live with such generosity of spirit, we are helping to build God's kingdom of love and we also become signs of the kingdom to those among whom we live. 
Just as at Christmas, we follow the example of Sinterklaas in giving presents. So throughout the year, we are inspired to give our time and our love generously to support and care for those among whom we live and work. Amen. now we share in our Advent Creed. We, we believe, believe in God, God the Father, Father creator of heaven and earth, the one who is full of patience, who is not afraid of silence, who does not need to fill each moment with activity and noise, the one who is beyond bluster and flurry, and who does not jostle for attention. We, we believe, believe in God, God the Son, Saviour of creation, who slipped into Bethlehem one night, mostly unnoticed, who lived thirty years without headlines or hurry, who frequently took time alone with his patient Father, who waited for the right time to become the suffering servant, who stood quietly before the noise of his accusers, whose silence overpowered their words, who died, then rose again on a quiet Sunday morning. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens, empowers, renews and refreshes, sometimes arriving with obvious power, sometimes with the quiet breath of a whisper. We believe in one God, who patiently waits for us and who longs for us to do the same.
paid the price That all who trust in Him today Find healing in His sacrifice That all who trust in Him today Find healing in His sacrifice God of Advent, you became weak so that we could find strength in moments of heartbreak. You left the safety of your heaven to wander the wilderness of the world. Holding our hands when we feel hopeless, you set aside your glory to hold our pain so we might be healed even when there seems to be no hope. You became one of us so we would never be alone in any moment, in any circumstances. Lord, in this season when every heart should be happy and light, many of us are struggling with the heaviness of life, with burdens that steal our joy. Fill us with your light instead of darkness. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Holy God of Advent, you sent John the Baptist to prepare the way. Help us to clear the way in our hearts and our minds, to concentrate on the true meaning of Christ's coming and not on the worldly things around us, which so often block out our thoughts and worship of you. Lord God, we live in disturbing days across the world, a world filled with doubt and conflict, inequality and injustice. Make this time of waiting the time of a new awakening of thought, consideration, endeavour and action by all leaders and all nations to bring about peace,
freedom and understanding through the knowledge of the one true gift of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Holy God of Advent, whose Son Jesus Christ understood people's fear and pain before they themselves were aware of them, have mercy on those in need, for the hungry and the homeless, for those in refugee camps and prisons, hospitals and care homes, and for those who are cared for in their own homes. We especially think of those suffering from COVID. Bless those who work to bring the relief of the sick. Inspire generosity and compassion in our hearts as we move into this time of goodwill to all people. Lord Jesus, pour out your spirit on us today. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Amen. And we say together the prayer which Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father which art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and, and the glory, glory forever, forever and, and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armour of light. Now, in the time of this mortal life in which your Son Jesus Christ came to us in great humility, so that at the last, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We wait for your loving kindness, O Lord, in the midst of your temple. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. And we bow our heads for God's blessing. May God the Father, who loved the world so much that he sent his only Son, give you grace to prepare for eternal life. Amen. Amen. May God the Son, who comes to us as Redeemer and Judge, reveal to you the path from darkness to light. Amen. Amen. May God the Holy Spirit, by whose working the Virgin Mary conceived the Christ, help you bear the fruits of holiness. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you, your homes and all whom you love now and always. Amen. Amen.
strength and consolation Hope of all the earth thou art Desire of every nation Joy of every longing heart to deliver born a child and yet a king born to reign in us forever now thy gracious kingdom bring by thine own eternal spirit Sufficient merit, raise us to thy glorious throne.